Okay, our next presenter joins us from the Dallas ISD Environmental Education Center. Ms. Ricky will be sharing outdoor activities we can engage in not only with our little ones, but even our high school students. Hello everyone, I'm Ms. Shram. And um, like she mentioned, I am from the Dallas ISD Environmental Education Center. And okay, should I share my screen or? Okay. Okay, thank you. So for pre-K and elementary school age, um, the TEKS ask that they collect, observe, record, describe, and identify. So I've come up with some ways that you can get your little ones outside and interacting with nature. Okay, so these are some simple ideas that you can do just outside at the park, around the house. Um, so we've got scavenger hunts, bird feeders, plant rubbings, nature art and starting a garden. There's a little example of a kind of crazy, <laughs> elaborate, awesome garden, but um, you can see they've got the little letters in there, a little play place and tons of things growing. Okay, so this is one of my favorite things to do with the little ones. Um, I adapted a little bit when we have students come out um, over our summer science programs, but it's just simple ways to get kids paying closer attention and looking at nature. So there's a lot of different ways to do it, um, especially for the little ones. I love the egg carton idea on the left. So all you do is take an egg carton and kind of pick um, a dozen things for them to find, and then they can actually hold on to their little collection and bring it with them. So it's just simple things and you can do your own. There's also ones online you can find, but just simple things for them to be looking up close and looking for when they're outside. And then of course, if they're a little older elementary, um, it can get more specific and have it written out so they can find a lot more things. You could also have them do this with their iPads or phone, take pictures of what they find if you don't want them bringing all that nature back inside with them. Um, and you could do it with living things as well. Okay, this is one that I'll be doing soon um, because it is fall and as the birds and squirrels prepare for winter, they are looking for seeds. So the example on the left is just a saved like toilet paper roll. You could also use paper towel rolls, something simple that you already have at the house and roll it up in peanut butter and then roll it in the seeds. And the kids love making oh, these. <laughs> so the kids love making these and then you can hang it outside your window and watch the birds come visit. Then the one on the right is obviously a pine cone. Same thing, roll it up in peanut butter, tie a string and stick some seeds on it. All right, this one is self-explanatory, but it's a lot of fun, especially with fall coming. Um, if you wanna take your little one on a nature walk and they find any interesting leaves and bring them home, all you have to do is put a leaf underneath the paper and then a paper on top. And then they use their crayon to rub and they think it's like magic. So all of a sudden the patterns of the leaf come out onto the paper. All right, nature art, you can get creative with this. Um, these examples I found have just a simple Sharpie drawing on the back and the kids use things they find on their nature walk to fill it in, or they can draw their own, make their own patterns, whatever it is to get them outside looking around and trying to find something beautiful. And then of course you can start a garden. So the one on the left is recycling an old sandbox. Um, they've got 
mint and sage and strawberries and I see some parsley in the back. So they've got some herbs and veggies. And then the one on the right is just kind of whatever they found and whatever they, <laughs> the kid probably wanted to plant. So they could be as elaborate as you want, as big as you want, as small as you want, anything to get their hands dirty and watch something grow and change over time. Okay, so middle and high school, obviously you're gonna have to do a little more to get them engaged and excited. Um, their teeth mostly focus on investigating, planning, analyzing, designing, researching, and testing. So some ideas to get your middle school and high schoolers um, interacting with nature is to start composting, start a garden, same thing. Um, there's an app I'm gonna show you called Seek by iNaturalist, and you can even go hiking at the Post Oak Preserve. Okay, so my first example is uh, starting a garden. So these are a little more elaborate than the little ones. They're a little more purposeful. Um, on the Well, we both have different examples of raised beds, but on the left, you've got chives and lettuce and marigolds. And then on the right, you've got different kinds of tomatoes and cucumbers. So these, the older kids can definitely plan and kind of design a purpose for their garden. Do they wanna make a pollinator garden? Do they want it to grow cut flowers or veggies? Um, they could do a lot of research about com like companion planting or square foot gardening, what herbs and plants grow well together, ones that don't. Um, there's actually, you can make a huge project out of this deciding where, if they need to put it in full sun or if your home doesn't have full sun, what can grow in shade. There's a tons of different avenues you can go in. and. Even if you don't have a big yard, my yard here is very small. And even when I was in my apartment, I had container veggies. So there's a lot of creative ways you can grow your own food in a small space or a big space. Okay, so start a compost bin. Same thing, you can do this on a small scale or a large scale. Um, you really don't need that much space to start composting. Um, there's an example right in the center about composting in a bottle. Um, and then on the left is the alternative of like a larger compost, more traditional size. Um, we do a lot of composting at the environmental center, but I also do some at home. And the ones we have at the environmental center are huge. And the one I have here is very little. So on the right kind of, there's a good list of beginner things of what you can compost and what you cannot. So usually the rule is greens and browns, you can compost. So anything natural that comes from nature goes back into nature. And then there's a list of no-nos, things that you don't wanna put because they can breed bacteria and all that yucky stuff. So you might be wondering what's the point of composting. So composting is kind of like nature recycling. So anything that comes from the earth, you're bringing back to the earth. And you can use compost in your gardens to enhance the soil quality and it helps the veggies grow and everything for your crops for next year. It's basically creating your own soil. Okay, so then my other example is to hike the post oak trails. So the post oak preserve is 300 acres that is across from our facility at the environmental center. So our half right now is unfortunately closed to the public. We're not taking field trips and we really miss having your little ones, but across the street is the Post Oak Preserve, which is open to the public. We've got three hiking trails, um, a simple, medium, and then a more difficult. It's really just longer. Um, but if you hike our trails, there's a hidden lake. Um, there's also opportunities to go fishing out there and you may see some wildlife. So those are currently open um, from dawn till dusk. And uh, I think at the end, if we have question and answers, I could kind of share our address, but um, yeah, so you can hike the Post Oak Trails. We have trail markers so you don't get lost. And um, we'll be having some new trail markers coming in soon. 
that'll have QR codes so that you can kind of like interact with nature as you go along. So that's something to look forward to. And go ahead, next. Okay, so this app I use almost constantly um, out at the environmental center and even when I'm out and about um, on my own. And older kids would love this. Little kids would enjoy it too. I've used it with fourth graders at, um, during summer science, but this is really fun, something they can do on their own. So it's a free app called Seek and it um, is partnered with National Geographic and California Academy of Sciences. And really all it does is it kind of works like a QR code. So you open your camera or you open your app, it opens the camera and you can scan different plants or animals. Um, it goes from anything from like there, butterflies, you can even do fungi. So if you encounter different mushrooms and you wanna know what they are, different berries, if they're safe to eat. Um, so you can scan all sorts of things and it will identify it for you. And they actually have different challenges each month. Uh, conservation challenges where you have to see as many like native plants as you can and it'll pull up a lot of like statistics about the species how rare how common and there's a whole community of people using them it's kind of like pokemon go so it'll show like how many times that plant has been sighted in your area and different things like that it's really fun to do especially if you are hiking the post oak or any other trails because you're going to encounter a lot and also it helps you identify poison oak and poison ivy so you can avoid those as well. Okay, and then here's my contact information. Like I said, my name is um, Ricky Schramm. I'm an environmental teacher at the Dallas ISD STEM Environmental Education Center. Um, if you're looking for more ideas, how to grow things, what to grow, um, I'm on all the socials at Learner Garden, and I also post what we have going on at the Environmental Center so that when we do open up, um, you'll be able to kind of participate and join in when we have events. So now it's time for question and answers, if you have any. Ms. Schramm, there are not any in the chat, but there's a couple of people who have raised their hands. If you could kindly put your um, questions in the Q&A section so that we can get those um, asked and answered, please. It's, it's great information. And so the Post Oak Preserve, you said, is the one that's open? Yes. Okay. Let me see. And there's like, um, so our address is at 1600 Bowers Road in Seagullville. And you'll see like on our side, there's a fence and it's gonna be gated off pretty much. And it'll say Dallas ISD. And then the Post Oak side has a nice sign that says Post Oak Reserve. And you'll see all the trail markers right there. Thank you. Okay, yeah. let's see, um, Miss, is it Miss Eagle, Katrina Eagle, can you go ahead and ask your question, please? I don't think she can get on here. Um, let's see. There's a Samuel right under. Uh, can we allow him to talk? Maybe he might be able to. I don't think they're letting them. Okay. Um, you can unmute. Um, I think I see a question in the chat. Um, okay, so who can attend the Dallas ISD STEM Environmental Center? So during a typical year, um, teachers can sign up and take their students for free field trips. So our center serves the entire school district from pre-K to 12th grade. So teachers can sign up. But right now, since we have um, the whole COVID stuff, we are virtual. So teachers are still signing up. Um, we're on YouTube where you could see our virtual field trips. Um, we're doing those like four times a day, Monday through Thursday, and then the recordings are available on YouTube. So you can still see what's 
going on over there. Um, and like I said, the post oak is open from dawn till dusk. Is there a charge for the post oak preserve? No, it's free. Um, I've got a question. I don't know what the question is that Miss um, Abel has a son with special needs. Is this appropriate? Inappropriate? Um, and is there activities for special needs children for um, their field trip? Yes, for sure. Um, everyone's welcome. There's something for everyone. Like I said, we serve the entire district um, and it's important for everyone to get out in nature and interact. Um, yeah, so it's perfectly appropriate. Okay, Ms. Ram, I don't see any more questions on this great information and um, we look forward to going out there to look and see all the things that you've described for us. Virginia, there's actually one question um, from Lucero Andasola. It says, how can schools, teachers get access to virtual field trips? So um, our director, uh, Mr. Broughton, is actually emailing all science teachers through the district. He's kind of slowly making his way through the theater patterns. It's also available on our website. So if you look up Dallas ISD STEM Environmental Education Center, um, there are ways to sign up for field trips and we're constantly having like rolling openings so they can sign up throughout the year. 